morning. I have some bad wheat cramps, meaning when I when I eat wheat, or I don't know if it's wheat exactly, but when I eat certain things or certain ways or something, I get these cramps across right here. So this is like where my belly button is, so like right there. And um, that's what I'm experiencing now. This is beautiful lighting. I also have a headache, sinus headache again, sinus migraine, I don't know. I'm gonna go eat again because I didn't eat that much this morning. It's not a great weekend. I don't know how to... Sometimes I, I think there's like so much treasure in these moments for myself, for others. I don't know how to encapsulate that in the best way and in the most positive way. It was not a good weekend. It was... It has some good things in it, but Nelson and I were very off with each other this weekend. We're just like, like that. I can go to the inception of it, where I think the inception was, which is, I'm working on my attachment style stuff. And sometimes I debate saying that as I'm trying to also be an attachment style coach, but I think why not you can see that I'm going through it. You can see that, you know, I'm not teaching something that I don't do myself or that I just don't empathize with because I don't even relate to it. You can see that I can totally relate to whatever you're going through. Maybe not so much. And it's interesting because they tell you, you know, for therapists especially, they tell you don't reveal yourself to the patients. And there's definite reasons not to but i'm not a therapist i'm a coach i don't know there's differences anyways long story short i'll leave it at that i i have a fearful avoidant attachment style meaning anxious with a partner that is leaning more dismissive avoidant i also i want to as i was putting my website together for my coaching side note I want to move away from labeling myself and others as the their attachment style. It's so much easier to say that than say, I have a fearful attachment style and it leans anxious when I'm with a person who has a dismissive avoidant attachment style. But that's more accurate because attachment styles are not things that we're born with. There are things that develop as a result of our personality meeting the environment. <laughs> Something I've had to deal with, and I feel like for this in for this interview, for this um, vlog, I'll refer to him as my partner because it is more an ob observational thing that I'm talking about rather than like, hey, here's my life and here's like what we did. Actually, when I met him years ago, I remember just holding on so tightly to what I thought was me. But now I realize was my attachment style, was the core wounds, the limiting beliefs, the triggers, the the things that were not me, that were developed through my life, that became enmeshed with my personality. So if you know um, internal family system, that's like a, a psychology theory. Sorry, my, I was like doing the spagat over here. And uh, yeah, we're, we're embracing this Romanian English situation. For those who know internal family systems uh, theory, I'm going to interchange a lot of terms. When you get triggered, which is a, an attachment style uh, term more, check out self-help workbook, I think it's called. And that's uh, basically internal family systems on yourself and on your own. You don't. But when you get triggered, that's a, a great opportunity for you to dig into that. Where does that come from? What is behind that? Why are you triggered? And triggering oftentimes you think of only when you blow up like oh that person was triggered oh you pushed someone's button but we can push people's buttons and the people who have those buttons pushed can shut down can uh, be like oh i don't care it doesn't matter um that's also it's interesting what is truly non-triggered behavior and responses versus what we assume based on colloquialism way of seeing things and talking about things but anyway so 
things that um, enmeshed with my personality. I'm gonna close this window, actually, hold on. I feel that it was way too no noisy and it was getting cold to stand in front of it. So things that I feel um, enmeshed with my personality. What am I saying? Why am I saying it that way? Things enmeshed in my personality and I felt very strongly like they were my personality. How I would respond, I would respond to things. For example, we also talk about um, astrology. We like, we're intrigued by astrology. Sometimes we would say, oh, that's such a Sagittarius. I'm a Sagittarius. Oh, that's such a Sagittarius thing. Being blunt. I even was, I have this one account on Instagram I follow that. One of the things recently was a meme kind of thing of a Sagittarius being like, oh, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings with the truth or something like that. It was the different astrology signs apologizing or something. And I honestly thought that was my personality. It gets complicated, as you can tell. If you don't believe in astrology, that's fine. I don't know. I love that we are both kind of in this. Like, we believe in it and we don't. We're still, like, the jury's still out, but we also are intrigued enough to kind of really believe it at the same time. You saying things coldly, um, undiplomatically, that's just who you are. Well, yes and no. There's, it gets muddy because there are things that you are. That's also why certain things that happened in your life you became a certain way because of who you are at your core that you came into this world with. The more I learn about psychology things and the attachment style, especially the attachment style stuff, the more I see that we are so much more nurtured versus natured. Our personalities, I think in general are so much less what we think is our personality and I remember holding on to what I thought was my personality like I'm not gonna change for anyone I think I was largely dismissive of Voidem before when I think about that because they don't want to change I'm not gonna change for anyone I don't know I just I, I say that because it, I find it so fascinating how I went from someone who was enmeshed now I'm mean, I'm going into the internal family sh system thing. Don't have battery. Why? Ah, I don't have time for the book. Um, but basically, like you have to pull the part away from your core self in internal family systems. I'm not sure exactly of the technical term, so please bear with me. At that time, I, was it fused? I think fused is the word they use. My parts, everything was fused together, and now I've started kind of at least noticing what is like attached to my true self um, as a part, as a attachment style, as a defense mechanism. How so much of who we all think we are are parts attached to our actual personality, are parts attached to our core self. And when we change these parts, we don't really change ourselves. Also, I'm not asking anyone to change. I'm not asking anyone to change themselves. I, I'm asking for a change to occur in a way, but I'm not asking for someone to change themselves. And it's hard to like explain that, especially when I'm running out of time. But I think that was the core part, at least from his side, feeling like that's what I was asking. And I thought I was coming in more neutrally, like, hey, like we have these two different cultural clashes that are happening. I recognize them as cultural flashes, oh, clashes. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. When I say cultural, it's not necessarily because I'm Romanian and he's American, but it's also um, our personal family culture. Every family has their own culture inside the big culture of their city and their state and their country and this hemisphere even. I just noticed that I will admit that I think I had a lot of different stacked up things that different little like buttons, triggers that I was sort of trying not to act upon during the day leading up to this um, conversation. So I think when I was speaking, what I thought was a neutral conversation or wanted to be a neutral, simple, I come in peace conversation. I think it came out with those things subconsciously that I had subconsciously, but I didn't really recognize consciously. And 
but he heard them because you when you communicate with someone you communicate with all of you especially in person you know everything we communicate with so much more than just the words that we use yeah basically we got in this trigger back and forth and it was a it was a rough time i feel bad because we both came from a good place and ironically i think we both wanted the same thing out of yesterday which was to kind of do our own different things but again a little bit of like communication clashes and if i'm honest <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'll be more honest on here than in real life sometimes but I think because of my attachment style stuff that I still have yet to work through the way it was really hard for me to say hey can we do our separate things today especially because it sounded on Friday it sounded like he wanted to spend time together and I was like ah oh, can't say no to him because that's my thing part of i think it came from a lot of that we were both kind of frustrated and came into it frustrated and ironically we wanted the same thing and it just kind of threw us off it just threw the whole weekend off for us and i'm really sad about that because neither of us wanted that and we didn't have to go there and we also, because we've known each other for so long and we've been through such a complex journey, I personally have started thinking there's a lot that plays into things that is from the past that we don't even realize is playing into the present on both ends. It's, it's hard when you're with someone or you've known someone for such a long time and we don't even know each other for such a long time I guess but like when you when you've been with someone and you've known them for a few years it's not that simple when you meet someone you go on a, a couple of dates it's like oh this is great this is perfect and you don't yet know all of the intricacies of that person being that person all the stuff that they bring to life from their experiences when people say don't bring your baggage from you know the past that's impossible unless you do extensive you know therapy and attachment style especially work on yourself and you like weed out an ifs like you weed out all the different parts and you stop the fusion and just like clean yourself off of all the different things that have affected you through your whole life and we are in our 30s so like 30 years worth of stuff that's impossible and you don't always want that you don't want to be a blank slate because I, I don't even know you're not a baby anymore you cannot be a blank slate you cannot unlearn what you've learned you can't I mean you can to an extent but it's always going to be there you'll always have that as a reference even though you're like oh I learned that but I know now that's not right so I'm gonna learn this instead but you always have like once upon a time this was what I knew was right or correct or whatever so the baggage the internal belief system that we've created based on how we've been treated and how the world has worked around us and taking for granted that is how we think the world works and how we think we are and we work and the other people should work because that's how we've been what's normal in our world in our bubble you kind of definitely have a hard time realizing oh there are a thousand different ways of doing something and a thousand different ways make it for a very complicated partnering up in life and i think for both of us too we are very we're looking a lot for perfection to a certain degree and we're looking a lot for i know for myself i'm looking i've looked for a long time to not do and have what i've seen around me but it's kind of also hard because that's the only reference I have. Even if I start having references of something else that, oh, that it looks much healthier, much better, more in line with my personality, who I want, uh, what I, who I am and what I want. I don't know how to do that because this is all I've learned. I don't know, I, I see people out there that are just, from my point of view, less perfectionist in their friendships, in their relationships, 
and they go hand in hand. There's people who, you know, there's a, a gamut of stuff, but I thought a lot over the past like 12 hours or so just looking at him and how amazing he is and how much I love him and how much he's really the person that I like and I like who he is and <laughs> he's cute and he's so good and kind and quirky and um he's just like awesome and I kept thinking what if I screw it up for good, like permanently. What if we screwed us up permanently? And the regret over that, because you can easily say, oh, you know, it wasn't meant to be, or oh, there's like someone else out there, or it's, you know, better that way. You can make so many excuses. And those excuses might be valid, you know, excuses doesn't mean they're falsities, is that a word? But I don't want to screw things up with him. I don't want things to go bad to a place where you can't fix it. I don't know when you stopped. I'm afraid that you stopped way before I was saying really nice things about my partner. <laughs> Somehow, it smells like a super condensed kitchen in the middle bathroom and my bathroom. Not in the hallway, not in the kitchen, but in here. So I put that, like, just intense. Let's see. Yeah, still super garlicky. Whoever is cooking, stop cooking. And it smelled even more baffling. It smelled in the one elevator that we took but it didn't smell in the elevator when we came when i came back up oh uh, so yeah oh i didn't i didn't film little odette well she's an adolescent odette now it is not from the vents because here it doesn't smell like anything it's just in the bathrooms so it's not from the heat vents it's from the air vents which I barely ever use. I feel emotionally up in the air. I felt that this whole weekend up in the air. I don't know how to say it other than that. And I don't know what that's about. I wonder if some of that, a lot of that, is also coming from just how insecure my life trajectory is at this point. My head hurts. Garnier fructis. <laughs> my boyfriend's boy, my boyfriend's brother's girlfriend it's so weird to call him my boyfriend anyways uh, yesterday i mean uh, i wasn't necessarily talking about it to her but she was mentioning how i can why am i so specific like people need to know exactly the very specific details of exactly what happened at what time that it was 114 and not 115 anyways uh, the time that wasn't a time we were talking it was irrelevant I'm just saying I've always been very precise and a stickler for that precision but yeah anyway so she was talking about how she is or has started going back into like normal shampoo non moisturizing shampoo it is so impossible to find the right shampoo and hair care in general. When I was younger, I felt like it just was fine, more or less. But now I feel like maybe my hormones have changed, shampoos maybe have changed, the environment may be different, especially moving in here. It's definitely a different like dryer because I use heat more and the water might be different. But even before moving in here, something changed um, where my hair is completely a bad hair day almost every single day and she reminded me of something that I heard I think through pros and I tried pros and it was a mess it, they did not do a good job making my shampoo I think there they also talked about how when you have buildup um, because of the moisturizing and doesn't like you have nothing that like clarifies your scalp you start losing hair because it basically clogs your pores and can't that your scalp can't breathe and all that stuff and she reminded me when she was saying that she it reminded me of that and but at the same time I need 
definitely a moisturizing shampoo. The other problem for me is my hair is really fine and thin, oily at the scalp, dry everywhere else. Maybe because it doesn't reach further down, that's why it's it's just oily all the time. Like I can't go a day without washing my hair. Maybe, yeah, the second day is definitely oily, sometimes the same day. And yet, this is like very dry, very dry. I also have dyed my hair in the last two months, or two years, almost every month because of the gray hairs and all that. I think that's probably also why I need extra moisture, but also less on the scalp. And so I've, I've started using hair masks and intense, conditioners but only on the parts of my hair that don't touch at all my scalp and then there I just use uh, I've started actually using a combination of Redken moisturizing super soft or whatever shampoo and then the clarifying not a vino but something also botanical something or another tea tree oil and chamomile so combining those two shampoos makes it like a little bit more moisturizing but also clarifying at the same time and i started using the little massage brush and it has made a difference i feel less scabby stuff on my scalp it's got really bad and i noticed i, I mentioned i think in one of the other vlogs my hair um is not as long as it could be and i wonder if that's the reason i used to really be precise if something negative would happen i would be precise in that it's not necessarily that i would put more emphasis on that but maybe and now i'm trying just i need to i want to put more emphasis on the good and the positive not to lie to myself or anyone else not in that sense i've never been that way i don't want to be that way i'm just saying take the positive and not let it get lost in everything and not get let it disappear and become invisible as a result of getting lost through all the other stuff that's not don't let the bad stuff murky the water to the point that you can't see anything good and i'm getting better and i'm again working through my stuff and it's wish that i was perfect from the beginning it takes a lot for me to feel secure enough to say no to plans because of a lifetime of feeling i'll take it when i get it otherwise it'll be forever until i get it again i remember in college even when it rains it pours that's kind of how i felt and then it's a desert you know when one person wants to hang out everyone wants to hang out and then no one wants to hang out for like weeks and it wasn't just me it was something that i said with a bunch of people like oh we well, noticed it you know it's a work in progress and i feel like i failed this weekend it was such a golden opportunity we are in such a good space and I am in such a better place where I can truly relax and, and flourish. And I have this feeling that I have a partner that, you know, is there for me. Like I can go explore. So the old knowledge that I had of attachment styles came from this little video, this little glob or something. It was talking about how when you're at a certain age, you naturally become curious to explore explore the world outside of your family of your caretaker if you have a secure caretaker and you have a secure bond then you learn to go explore and you know that that person is there for you when you come back they're there no matter what and on like a very basic understanding of attachment styles that's kind of what a secure attachment is and insecure attachments, whether they are anxious, preoccupied, or anxious attachments, fearful avoidant, or dismissive avoidant. So whichever one of those insecure attachments you are, you basically didn't have a secure home base. Because maybe your parents were... But the popular one is drinking so they weren't available because they were drunk or somewhat inebriated by something or they were abusive but i feel like those are extreme cases and i think a lot more understandable and a lot of people go like well that's not me i didn't i had a fine childhood my family was okay normal good they loved me i love them so most people might not identify with that and yet they still have these attachment styles um these insecurities these wounds that developed because maybe their parents were busy because they had a lot of siblings 
so they had a lot of kids to take care of and they weren't as available to each one maybe they were uh, depressed or anxious and so they would not be able to be fully emotionally focused like they put food on the table all the time they talk to you in all the time all that stuff but maybe they were just sometimes you would have to yell their name mom dad whatever like three times before they answered or there's more things where it takes someone to be less available not just physically but emotionally to working parents and so some people become dismissive avoidance where it's like okay fine i'll just take care of myself you can't rely on the caretaker you can only rely on yourself and that translates into the world like you cannot rely on your partner you cannot rely on friends on family on anyone you can only rely on yourself and it makes for partners that are not able to rely on you uh, in a healthy manner um, they just and they also can't be relied upon because they feel like well you should rely on yourself like you shouldn't rely on me you have anxious attached uh, individuals who I know I said I'm not gonna use you know I'm not gonna mesh the individual with the attachment style but so forgive me for it right now we have people with anxious attachment who are whose parents or caretakers were somewhat there um, if they screamed loud enough and they learned oh if I scream loud enough then my needs will get met all the time. And then you have fearful avoidance who have a combination. So maybe sometimes you would get your needs met, maybe sometimes you wouldn't. But there's some possibility that you could. The old model that I learned, or maybe it's the same, but the very basic part of it is, because I notice it with as I'm becoming secure in my relationship, I feel like, oh, I'm, I'm becoming curious to explore by myself because I know I get to come home to, metaphorically, to my partner and he's there and he's not going anywhere. And so what that really translates to as a, an adult relationship is, oh, I can take the day to myself or take the night to myself. Let's hang out tomorrow because today I want to clean my apartment or whatever it is or he's busy and i'm not triggered like oh my gosh he's abandoning me he's leaving he's not into me doesn't want to be with me as i'm becoming secure it's it's a process of really being able to fully be okay with saying no to plans and i know he would welcome any time he spends with himself <laughs> because he has like especially since we started working out he has such a busy schedule um, that includes me too in that yeah but i think it's also an internal battle of when the day is so nice during these weekends it's like oh i know i said i wanted to you know stay in clean my room basically but it's so nice out let me like switch gears pivot hello this is arena from the future on March 1st. I, I literally cannot use my hips. <laughs> oh my gosh. Alright, I don't know what happened to this shirt. I want to say, as I'm editing February 26th, okay. it sounds very much like I'm focusing solely on how, and it sounds like I'm saying that Saturday, what happened was solely related to me wanting to not hang out but then not uh, being able to say no because of my attachment style that's not what i'm saying exactly i mean that's that's part of it that's one part of many parts that played into saturday i just wanted to make that clear because I, I guess i hyper focus when i go down a rabbit hole of one point i hyper focus on that point because i get so intrigued that i'm so excited and passionate about psychology in general and how we work and all these things so that's what i was doing here there are other things that played into saturday that happened and so forth and also the the second part of that this is my vlog so i'm going to talk about my journey much more than anyone else's journey and it is also not my place to talk about anyone else's journey so when i talk about things that happen it's from my point of view and if you feel like i'm just talking and i'm just like kind of blaming myself for everything and i don't sound 
like I'm treating it more equally. That is, again, not what's happening, not what I mean. I'm just fascinated about my personal journey and what I can take and how I can grow from that. I think this is where I keep getting stuck on vlogging and doing the vlogging thing or doing anything. This might be so relatable. I get the oomph, you know, like, oh my gosh, yes, it's exciting, let's do this. I have a plan, I can see the vision, um, etc. And then maybe it lasts a day, two, or even a few hours, and then it's like this crash. And it's a crash of maybe subconscious insecurities. I get confused by that because, I guess because I always saw myself as a very confident person. And now that I'm not, I don't know... It's like new territory and I don't know how to get out of it because I always rely that I just always do. And in a way I do still, but I'm also kind of tired too. And oh my God, it's still 67. Um, this is insane. This cookie, oh my gosh, I cannot take this. It smells so bad. Where is the, these people's freaking kitchen? It smells so bad. I, I feel like yelling to would have whichever neighbor to just stop. It gets worse. It's getting worse. Maybe my mom was right that the airflow helps it because when I stopped it, it got worse. So I'm gonna leave it on. Yeah, maybe it like filters it out in the process, but this is beyond insane. All right, I could talk for hours, obviously. You know me. But it is what it is. We'll see what tomorrow brings. As I was telling you one earlier, I might do these vlogs as not day one, day two parts, wherever it feels natural to like interrupt and cut it into pieces. So maybe you'll have, you know, more videos that cover a day than just one video that covers a day, if that makes sense. Once I'm, I have an interview, I'll take you on that journey. Hopefully that comes soon. <laughs> Once I have a business up and running, I'll t take you on that journey if that happens. So, yeah. If you have people that are looking for freelance marketing strategy consultants, basically, I'm your gal. Let me know. Send them over. I wish I could do makeup tutorials, but don't have enough makeup. Well, I could. But I don't have good makeup, like, especially facial makeup. And if you don't have the good facial makeup and you don't have the good lighting, then the eye makeup is not going to be great. I don't have my Xbox right now. So I'm going to do more of those things. But yeah, I feel like I still want to do something where I talk about some shows. All I can think of is you need to find income. You need to find a job. <laughs> what the heck? This is going to give me nightmares. Like, what? That is not gonna give me as my, my. Well, I take that back. That is so freaking weird. That is so excessive. That is so excessive. But okay. Maybe we'll see how tomorrow goes, but maybe I'll just kind of organize some ideas around what I can do. Your internal temperature is high. I'll be right back. One second. One second. Anyways, with all of that said. I'm going to go in the fog of garlic. You know, the Field of Gold song that kind of popped in my head a little bit after I said that. Walking in a field of garlic, in a fog of garlic. Okay, the syllables don't match. Anyways. Um, so yeah, anyways, 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 anyways. Have a wonderful night day morning afternoon wherever you are let me know feedback if you've made it this far and you're like oh my gosh Irina, this was too long this was boring this was excessive this was uh or like oh my gosh this was long but i enjoyed that whatever it is or maybe you should talk about this more maybe you should talk about this less um let me know in the comments i was looking today my this hand I thought because I slept on it, it's like swollen, kind of. Definitely like thicker than like this, see? Like these are thinner. Maybe because this is my right hand and I'm a right-handed person, I don't know. 
Um, I will maybe take you on the journey of redoing my nails because this was for the interview and um, I wanted to take it off, but then I didn't. But yeah, definitely going to do that tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I hope you have a wonderful whatever time of day is where you are. Let me know. I hate to say this, excuse me, and I hate to say this, but let me know in the comments <laughs> what you liked, what you don't like. Um, any thoughts, comments, anything, any feedback, let me know. And um, primarily because I just freaking want to like interact with people. And um, yeah, but also be, you know, kind. You don't have to be nice. I mean, you can be nice and still say not nice things, if that makes sense. Anyways, but either way, you do you. And it's my responsibility how I take it. Um, but I wish you a great day. I wish that you had a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you tomorrow, Monday, with all the vlogs. I, that's going to be one of the challenges is do everything, including editing all the vlogs and getting up to date with that. And, uh, yeah, setting all these out. Anyways, cool. Peace, love, and compassion, y'all. Still forget the other one that I came up with. Um, I think it's in one of my videos, so I'll check that out. But yeah, have a good night or day. Bye. Hey, quick update. As I'm trying, as I'm getting into bed, we're like, yeah. Um, my knee hurts so bad, so bad. I need to properly clean it tomorrow. I just put some. rubbing alcohol and ironically that didn't hurt but neosporin hurt <laughs> and uh i need to do that tomorrow as well but also need to clean it but yeah every time i bend my knee or straighten my knee <laughs> it hurts you can't see it through this pant that's the situation right now it doesn't smell anymore in my bathroom but i'm still keeping that there and it smells a tiny bit in the closet, the walk-in closet, which is what I was worried about because I just cleaned clothes that I didn't even wear so far because it smelled like oil, imbued cotton. I would prefer not to smell any garlic going to bed. It is faint enough that I am okay in here. I am also a lot more hurt by the pants because those were my favorite pants. And Charlotte Russe does not make those pants anymore. Anyways, I'll talk to you later. Cool. Bye.